Hello and welcome to this Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast. I'm your host, Leah Rosen, the online editor for Bioprocess International. Before we get started, just a couple of notes. This webcast is being recorded and will be made available for replay in the multimedia section of our website. We've muted the audio lines, but we welcome you to type in your questions for our speaker in the chat window on your screen. After the presentation, we will begin the question and answer portion, and I will ask our speaker your questions from the chat window. Your questions in the chat window will only be visible to myself and our speaker. So thank you for joining us today. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Frank Lee from Catalent Biologics. Thank you for the introduction. Um, today, I'm going to take this opportunity to discuss uh, at Catalan Biologics our capability to providing uh, integrated solutions for biologic formulation and drug product development. There is a recent publication in the Journal of Pharmaceutical Sciences talking about the roadmap to biopharmaceutical drug product development. As you can see, uh, there's a number of steps uh, in the roadmap for the biopharmaceutical drug product development, starting from preclinical and go to the clinical phase, including the early phase one and two development and late phase three development, then go to the process validation steps. There's a many different studies need to be supported for this development. At the Catalan Biologics, our focus is to supporting our clients to providing those services, mainly focused on the clinical development phase, including the phase one, two development for example, early stage formulation and drug product process development, and also the late stage development in phase three, such as commercial formulation optimization, commercial process development, and the formulation robustness studies. Particularly robust, robustness studies for the formulation is really important in the late stage where you need to have a optimized and a robust formulation to develop to ensure the drug product quality and the stability during commercial manufacturing, storage, and the clinical administration. Based on our interaction with our clients, um, we typically come up with a whole package for our clients to support their drug product development needs. Those packages can be divided into different development phases based on the client needs. For example, in the preclinical and IND enabling phase, we can have able to support activities from pre-formulation development to formulation development, number of compatibility studies to supporting drug product manufacturing, in use stability for dose, IV administration studies for IV infusion drugs, and the time of refrigeration studies. And in the early stage, we also can support number of the drug product process development, including the free saw, mixing, pumping, filtration, and localization cycle development. There's also need in the mid phase, phase two and phase three stage, that some of the drug product image need to be changed. We can support that to switching the drug product imaging from wild to pre filled syringe and also formulation changes from low formulation to liquid formulation or from low concentration to high concentration switch. Of course, the last but not the least, in the phase three stage development, we can support drug product process characterization and also formulation robustness studies. In the following slide, I'm going to talk about number of the case that what is our approach and the strategy to supporting those activities which is I highlighted here in red. First case is actually, I'm going to talk about how we're able to conduct a fast formula development for preclinical and enabling ND. In this study, we have a platform approach basically to develop the formulation within 12 months, uh, 12 weeks, to able to lock the formulation and the support the tox production. This 12 weeks divided into two phases. The first six weeks will conduct a high throughput pre-formulation screening 
using 96 wild plate. And the second part, six weeks, we do further formulation development and the final lockdown formulation. The overall 12 weeks enable the client have a pretty good formulation to enable the further studies. Depending on the data from the first part of the study in the formulation development, we will decide, based on our experience, to decide if this product is good for liquid formulation or is good for low formulation. If the product has good enough stability, we'll move forward with the liquid formulation. Meanwhile, conduct drug product process development to enable the clinical drug product manufacturing. If the formulation and the molecular turns out to not be able to handle liquid conditions to reach the required shelf life, we will recommend our client to develop a lab formulation. Of course, during the formulation studies, we will put into the lab formulation in mind, developing lab fertilization compatible formulation, then you can directly go to lab cycle development. This lab cycle development takes another six weeks, can be parallel to the rest of the drug product process development. And meanwhile, which is means overall, as fast as 18 weeks, we should be able to, starting from scratch, all the way have a final formulation and drug product process locked down to support IND. And I think this is a very fast way to able to move the molecular into the IND as quick as possible. To enable me to do that, of course, internally here at Catan Biologics, we set up an automated high throughput platform for the pre-formulation screening. Essentially, in this uh, pre-formulation screening, we are able to screen up to 96 formulations on a 96 wild plate. On the 96 wild plate, we basically can do a full factory design containing four buffer types. Each buffer have three pH and combined with eight excipients. That's totally 96 conditions we can screen off. And everything was prepared on the 96 wild plate by using the liquid handling system we have a TKN unit on site to do that. Of course, after we stage the plate into a stress condition, after that, those plates can be further distributed into an individual daughter plate for a further analytical analysis. The stress here we choose is uh, two different types. One is the thermal stress at 40 degrees, usually can be for one or two weeks. Another one is the free source stress. The way we're able to stage the formulation at the 96 well plate is uh, really based on our plate sealing techniques. We prefer prepared the plates with pecan units and we cover it with an adhesive film and place that into the moisture barrier bag. We vacuum the bag, have the bag well sealed with the plate. We did some studies uh, weigh the bag before and after the stress at 40 degrees for seven days, then we found we only have very minimum loss of the volume, the mass, to the entire material, which is less than 0.01%. This shows that we have pretty good seeding technique. Therefore, during this entire stress, there's no um, material loss, typically evaporation of the water. So. The formulation will keep the same concentration throughout the entire study. And then, of course, we have to rely on our high throughput analytical method. We have a fully established here at Catalan Biologics. Basically, I categorize it into two types of assays. One is the stability predicting assay, another one is the stability indicating assay. For stability predicting assays, we have a some assays handle the Claudius stability, such as KD and relative solubility. Another one, we're using the differential scanning fluorometry to look at the confirmation stability. The indicating assays are the typical ones, uh, ACC, play reader, A280, and A350, and also CESDS to look at 
fragmentation and the CDE to look at the charge variant. With all these methods, can be handled 96 well played and in a high super manner, we are able to fast turn around analytical data. For example, some of the testing times is only a couple hours for the entire plate, even some is only 10 minutes for the whole plate. But the others may take a day and a half to run, for example, at ECE. But overall, it's going to be really fast, and the entire sample volume required is not that high. Totally only required 500 microliter sample volume for the study. And with this, we can only use a very small amount of the sample and the turn around really quickly for the studies. That truly enabled us able to turn around the pre-formulation in six weeks and further formulation studies in another six weeks. So this is really going to be a good platform for the early stage development. Then at the early stage development, we also need to look at the drug product process. This is a typical drug product manufacturing flow chart. And actually, the one I have a star here are the studies we are able to develop with or without scaled down model. This is going to support a very early stage development. And I can also support late stage development as well. For scaled down model, the reason we want to have a scaled down model is our manufacturing scale usually handles very large scale. But at the early stage, when you do the development, typically our client doesn't have a lot of material to for the development. Therefore, we need to come up with a scaled-down model to be able to do the studies in the lab to support in those activities. For example, the mixing scaled-down model we have used. As you can see here, those are the, our typical mixing unit we use in our manufacturing. It is from a Mobius stack. We can do 100 liter and all the weights scale down from 100 liter to 10 liter scale down and even further down to 100 mil beaker. In this case, our scale down model is we keep the geometric ratio constant between the scales and we keep the free December constant between the scales. In this case, we have data to support. This is the best reflecting how fast you can mix in. And therefore, we can set a mathematically agitator speed between the larger scale and the smaller scale to understand what is the mixing time criteria by only using less, less product. Therefore, we can also study the mixing effects or the shear effects on the product. I know there's a lot of other mixing scale down models, such as keep speed and the power by volume. And for our studies, we studied all those as well keep the Floyd number constant so far based on our data showing this is the best scale down model for liquid liquid mixing, which is the most cases in our truck color manufacturing. Another case really for process development is our lyle cycle uh, transfer. We here at Kaslin, uh, in the lab, we have a lyle star instrument for the PD lab. We typically doing that using that instrument for cycle development and also run the confirmation around. And then we tech transfer those cycles directly into our manufacturing scale lyophilizer. Of course, the both the lyophilizer has primary gauge, and you can see the good overlapping between the two primary gauges showing a successful tech transfer for the primary drying and second drying phase. We have done this for more than a handful of the molecules and the formulations successfully. So this is basically showing that between our lab model and our large scale manufacturing model, we are able to pretty successfully transfer the lab cycles between different models. Of course, uh, when you move to the late stage, uh, you need to fully characterize the uh, drug product process. There are many steps, unique operations in the drug final commercial drug product processes. In this case, I basically demonstrating we came up totally 15 different studies to support the entire drug product manufacturing process. 
And uh, for example, some of the mixing speed studies, free soil studies, hold time, and mixing stress studies, and the feeding stress studies. So we do have experience able to support the entire drug product process development is really important for late stage drug product process. And of course, the last, but not the least, as I mentioned earlier, you need to have a robust formulation. To have a robust formulation, in this case, we have five factors for this formulation, including the API concentration, the pH, exceeding A concentration, buffer concentration, and exceeding B concentration. The five factors, we can, each one has a range. We are able to design a resolution three fractional factory design for five factors with two center point batches, totally 10 batches. With this total 10, 10 batches staged on the stability, we are able to define a good control space for the final formulation and the demonstrated robustness of the formulation. So overall, I want to talk about is really uh, we have the solution for the entire drug product, product development from early stage to late stage, which is including high throughput screening with 96 wild play format for the early stage formulation screening and also the drug card of field finish process development to supporting early and late stage. Here at Kaplan, we able to using platform container closure system, and we use platform manufacturing technology, including the mixing, filtration, filling, and localization. With a number of scale down models here, we can able to support both early stage, small amount of material available to late stage, even at the, the real manufacturing scale. And also, for late stage development, we can also support in the formulation or imaging drug product imaging change and the process calculation and the formulation robustness studies. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention, and uh, I would like to entertain any questions. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Frank. So why is it important to conduct biopharmaceutical formulation development? Um, well, as you may know that biopharmaceutical products, uh, including proteins, vaccines, and other uh, biological molecules, they are typically not very stable. So conduct the formulation development should able to understanding what is the optimal conditions for those molecules to be able to survive in number of stresses during manufacturing, during storage, during shipping, and during administration. So conducting the formulation development is really truly to preserve those biologic molecules. And also, by working on the formulation development, you can also better understand the degradation pathways of those molecules. And based on the degradation pathways, appropriate analytical method can be developed to further characterize those molecules and the degradations of those, and to fully understanding the quality attributes of those molecules, which is going to be very important as well. Okay. And what is the risk benefit to conduct formulation development during early stage drug substance process development? Yeah, um, if you want to conduct formula development during early stage development, the really the benefit is conduct that earlier to able to support him very beginning during the drug substance development. As you may have found that during the drug substance development, of course you go from the cell line development and go to the culture development, then you go to purification development. Usually the last stage of the purification de development is develop uh, fuel fini uh, UFDF process, which is put the drug into the final formulation. By that, you really need to have a formulation locked to support that. Historically, people don't develop formulation until they went to the final drug product. 
But in uh, recent years, more and more people tending to go to a formulated drug substance and storage the formulated drug substance before they go to drug product manufacturing. Enable to have a formulated drug substance, you really need to have a formulation locked before your final purification process developed. Therefore, you really have to start the formulation development as early as possible because that takes time as well to able to support that. So our recommendation is to really have a drug substance development and the formulation development start parallelly. However, there is risk about it. Um, typically, the risks are at a very early stage. Um, you don't really have a lot of material to start with. And uh, many times it takes a uh, long time to do that. And also the labor and the cost involving to do the development. But I, as I can say, as I said in the earlier in the presentation, our platform taking care of a lot of those risks. For example, our high throughput platform is only using very limited amount of sample to do the development. We can take in the sample as early as the protein A stage for the development to get started. So we don't really need a lot. And also the high throughput automation taking out a lot of the burden on the cost and also onto the labor cost. So with that said, with this automated platform for high school formulation, we should be able to enable us to do a early stage with very limited amount of sample and the reduced amount of the cost and the labor. So put that in there, the benefit I think is much greater than the risks here to conduct the formulation development in early stage. Okay, great. So thank you, Frank. Okay, thank you. And thanks to our audience for joining us. The recorded version of this webcast will be available for on-demand viewing on our website, and as a registered attendee, you'll receive a follow-up email providing you with a direct link. We look forward to having you join us at future Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast. Look for those announcements in your inbox. Goodbye.